In a previous video, I asked the question, are happy people stupid? That's a rhetorical question. Um, because uh, the assumption being, of course, if ha happy people are stupid because they are happy, or they're happy because they're stupid, then unstupidity would presumably be unhappiness. If they're only happy because they're stupid, if they were not stupid, they would be unhappy. It seems to work that way. Now, that got me thinking. Um, what would the color red look like to a blind person, or even to a colorblind person? Um, that's kind of an interesting uh, interesting thought experiment that's been with us since the dawn of time, I think. And it's an interesting one because it comes right down to one the, the basic levels of one's experiences. What does it mean to perceive something? What points of reference do we have? And when you're placing value on things, how can you do that? How can you place value on things? Well, you only have a scale that's of your own making, essentially. Um, but I think that we do understand when we are happy and when we are not so happy. But interestingly though, as somebody who, um, just as somebody who is blind might have trouble discovering what, or imagining what red could possibly look like, or grasp what it means when they finally are cured of their blindness, say, um, what would a person who has never been happy what would their view of happiness be? Would they even be able to comment on it at all? Um, I'm not really saying that such a thing is possible to have never experienced happiness or never to have experienced joy. Um, but let's say that all you've ever felt are pain, futility, boredom, uh, fear, and that sort of thing, and you've never actually felt calm, joy, secure, and um, fulfilled? Would you have the tools at your disposal to get yourself out of the unhappy state that you're in? Would you even be able to understand what uh, that state actually is? Would you even be able to explain your state to someone else? Would someone who is a happy person be able to explain their condition to you? Would it make any sense to you? <laughs> I don't really think that we can actually solve this one, but it's an interesting one. Um, and I think that uh, it, the, the implications of this sort of thing are kind of disturbing or, or relieving, I suppose, in, in, in another sense, in that we really don't have anything to judge anything on but our own standards. But... I'm willing to bet a nickel that we actually do have differences of experience, difference, differences in our experiences of value. That someone who is unhappy, or who is depressed, or who is um, otherwise feeling less than neutral about the world, understands that this is not a desirable situation to be in. Regardless of whether or not they can understand that there is an, another way to be. Um, as I said before, uh, the depressed person loses the capacity to understand that happiness is possible. So I suppose, uh, even if they do remember a time when they were happy, they might think, okay, well, I was kind of deluded, and now I'm seeing things clearly. And um, going from the happy state to the unhappy was pretty a pretty nasty experience. Um, and conversely, going from the unhappy to the happy state can be a very nice experience. <clears throat> and I think that most of us fluctuate in between the two. But what if you've never experienced happiness? <laughs> what would a universe like that look like? I'm not saying that, I'm not trying to imagine um, a fundamentally hellish universe. But what would it look like? What would the universe look like? from the point of view of someone who has never been happy. 
And furthermore, <laughs> if there is such a thing as compassion, what would one do if one came across such a person? <laughs> in the interests of compassion, in the in interest of mor morality, altruism, ethics. <laughs> it's an interesting and, as I say, somewhat disturbing question. <laughs> Thank you.